So you're here because you want to find a nanny and you're wondering, is there an immigration program that can help you do that? Or maybe you know that there is an immigration program that can help you bring that magical nanny of your wondrous dreams here to the United States and you're wondering how to do that. Or maybe you are an aspiring nanny abroad who knows that there's an immigration program that can help you come work for a family in America and you're wondering what to tell them. Well, if any of those three describe you or if you're just in the market for a nanny and you have and even heard of an immigration program that can help, then stick around because in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the H2B visa to possibly bring a nanny from outside the United States to work for you here. Many families can take advantage of this program, but there are several things that you need to learn. So what follows is an overview of the program. And then after this, there's going to be a multi-part series that's going to go into depth into some of the questions and issues that you might face. And remember, there is an ebook that you can download in this video and all videos having to do with the nannies called the H2B ebook for bringing a nanny to the United States. And that's available on our website, FrontierTech.com. That's the H2B ebook for nannies. I know, great name. And you can find it in a link in the description of this video, but also on FrontierTech.com. Welcome back. My name is Damien DeNoble. This is Log Rate, the channel where I give you reliable information, help you make better decisions and avoid uh, costly mistakes on your immigration journey. I am uh, a lawyer that's been working with the H2B program for seven years and I'm part of the Seasonal Employer Alliance, which is this big lobby group uh, in Washington, D.C. that really works on the H2B visa and uh, tries to get the laws and regulations that kind of govern this program to be better uh, for both employers and employees. And for the past few years, I've been sharing things on this channel. So one of the things that I did first, I believe, in the United States that I did first, maybe in, in greater numbers than anybody else, is figured out how to use the H2B program to help uh, families who need nannies bring those nannies to the United States. I've done the same for caregivers and there's gonna be a caregiver series. In this video, I wanna go into depth in depth uh, on the nanny program. I've done that in some past videos, but this video is new. This is 2022 and I'm filming, filming this at the start of October. And there's been a lot of lessons that I've learned and, and I'm, I'm trying to make the program better year after year, but I'm also just going all in on nannies. I, I think this program could really be a novel way for families uh, to bring in lots of nanny help to the United States during a, a, a childcare shortage that has, uh, that's really unprecedented in the United States. That's really unprecedented. So I'm going to take you about through an overview of the program, kind of the general things you need to know, and then every video after this, and there's going to be a series, so you should subscribe and follow, is going to go into a particular uh, part of, of what I said. It's gonna give you more details, and again, we have this uh, H2B ebook for nannies that you can download in the link in the description of this video, or you can go to our website for more information. So let's begin. So you want a nanny, right? You've probably looked for a nanny and you can't find one locally, uh, or the nanny kind of nanny you want uh, needs to be culturally specific to you and you can't find that locally. Or maybe you live in a really isolated area. There's no question about finding a nanny locally. You just, you just need to find some one somewhere. But in any case, you're, you're, you're probably somebody that works a lot maybe you have a spouse or partner and they work too and it's not a question that you need a nanny either to get back into your career or to work uh, like you want to in the career that you have uh, or, or maybe it's just uh, you just need a break you know and, and you have young kids and uh, hey you need a nanny so you've looked at programs uh, in the immigration space. You've probably seen the J programs for au pair nannies. That's J as in John uh, for the au pair nannies. And that might not be for you, right? There's a limitation on how long the nanny can be with you. You have to have certain things installed in your house. You have to have a separate bedroom, bathroom. Uh, they can only work for a certain number of hours. Maybe you've decided that's not for you. And this video is not about that. It's not about, about the au pair program. Maybe you've looked into a, a green card for somebody that you think could be a really good nanny and found that, hey, EB3 threes, EB-3, these green cards for nannies take forever. They take over two years and you're not even guaranteed a spot and it's just, it's just a pain. Okay. And so you've landed here, which is about the H-2B visa. That's the H-2B. And hopefully everything I'm saying is popping up on this, uh, 
kind of screen here to the side of me. This is about that. The H2B is a temporary visa program. It's a temporary worker program. The H2A is for agricultural workers. The H2B is for non-agricultural workers. It's colloquially, colloquially known as the unskilled visa program, which is such a misnomer because there's nothing unskilled about the workers that we bring on the H2B program. Now, the three categories that are usually talked about for the H2B program, because this program has four categories are for seasonal workers, for workers that are here to cover peak load uh, times for employers. So peak load times are times when there's more work during the year than in other parts of the year or intermittent labor. So this is for employers that have unpredictable labor situations, but they sure as heck have spikes all throughout the year and they need to make sure they have a temporary workforce that can handle those spikes. Seasonal employers, of course, are employers whose work and business is tied to particular seasons like landscapers in their northern United States, for example. But there's a fourth category and that fourth category is called the one-time category. So if you need a worker for a one-time purpose, uh, for example, uh, there's been a uh, hurricane hit your town sadly and now you need to rebuild maybe maybe employers construction companies apply for one-time workers that are going to be working on uh, emergency cleanup emergency rebuilding okay that one-time category is what we use for nannies uh, this is the uh, category under which we say well we have one-time need uh, need a nanny for a period of one to three years uh, that's going to help me while my child is really young and can't go to kindergarten, can't go to preschool. And uh, during that time, I need childcare because I need to go to work or I need to go back to work or whatever the need may be. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the H2B temporary worker visa under the one time category. And we'll talk more about that in other videos. I've already said it's a one to three year visa. So you can get certified for one to three years, depending on your situation. Not everybody can go for three, not everybody can go for one. There's gonna be considerations that you wanna think about based on the, which consulate you're even going through about which number you wanna apply for, right? Some consulates are really picky and three years might be a stretch if your nanny is from you know, one of those consulates. One year, you know, might be better in those circumstances. Uh, on the other hand, some consulates might be really friendly and three years might be okay. You also need to make sure that your nanny that you're going to bring in is uh, from, meaning she's a, na he or she is a national of a country on the H2B country list, which we're going to let go down this screen. And the H H2B country list uh, can be found if you just Google H2B country list. Okay, not all countries uh, are on that list and you have to make sure that the person you want to hire is from that list, okay? Uh, now, can you get an exception? For some H2B occupations, you can. You can't get it uh, for the nanny occupation. Let's just leave it at that. Everybody asks, the answer is you cannot get an exception. You have to be, uh, the nanny has to be from a country that's uh, on that H2B country list. The next thing is you are applying for a nanny, not like you apply for the au pair program or you're a family and the nanny has to be good, good match. No, you are going to be petitioning as an employer. So that means you're either going to be a sole proprietor or an LLC, or in some cases an S corporation, right? I've never done a C corp, right? I'm, maybe that could, that could work. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but sole proprietor generally, LLC generally. So that's something that you have to be able to set up in order to be able to use it. And then you're gonna to have to use that employer identity uh, to set up things like uh, work, uh, workforce agency accounts in your home state. You're gonna to have to register to pay taxes. You're gonna be using that to you know, register for any payroll services. You are going to be a full-fledged employer. And that's really important to know because there's a level of commitment that you have to have in order to, to make the decision to go forward with this program. And again, I'm going to talk about that in further videos. And again, you can download the ebook here to hear more about that particular element. Then there's the element of the nanny and themselves. The nanny has to be admissible, able to enter the United States. If they're in the United States, they have to be in status and they have to be eligible to actually adjust status to the H2B visa. This gets into questions of immigrant intent. It gets into questions of uh, the visas that the nanny might be on it gets into questions of immigration history the nanny you're hiring it gets into questions of your history with that person in theory could you bring somebody over that you'd already hired as a nanny 
perhaps. Could you bring somebody over that was your fiance or your family member, perhaps? But in practice, Whenever there's a familiar relation or a relation that's that, that, that's awkward, that really should be going through a different visa like a fiance, that's gonna be heavily scrutinized. And I've seen, or what I suspect, have been people who really should have been going through the fiance process, uh, who really didn't actually wanna hire somebody as a nanny, try to go this route, and they have failed miserably, particularly at the Department of State stage. So I would, number one, if I work with you, I really wanna know that. Uh, and number two, uh, it might not be the best route. This is not a program to get around uh, the restrictions and the wait times in particular of other categories. Now, if somebody is a family member and they legitimately want to be employed as a nanny, then that's perhaps okay, but there's a lot of things that we want to screen for because I'll tell you right now, the Department of State and USCIS are going to be heavily scrutinizing those applications. I will talk more about that in a separate video, but I just want to kind of flag that here for you. The other thing to keep in mind is that whoever you bring in, that nanny, can't be somebody that you previously employed, right? And it can't, as a nanny, and you yourself can't have previously employed a nanny. Now, if you uh, employed an au pair, that's okay. That's a different category. If you employed a, a caregiver or a doula, that's okay. That's a different category. But if you employed a nanny as that sole proprietor at LLC that you're applying with before, even if it's abroad, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen uh, hirings abroad rejected, even though they shouldn't be USCIS. But uh, any previous employment of a nanny um, could be a big negative factor in your ability to get a nanny through this program. That's a question that you want to work through with a lawyer. But I'm again, I'm just flagging it for you here. There are three agencies that you're gonna be working with in the H2B program. And, and when people apply for au pairs, they're used to working with the sponsoring organization, the sponsoring organization, maybe sign a few contracts and you know, you, you make sure that you have certain things in place for the au pair and then the au pair comes. You pay, you, you pay money and the au pair comes. This is not like that. This is a really complex, annoying program. You're going to have to apply uh, for something called the prevailing wage. You're gonna to have to work with the Department of Labor directly, then the US Citizenship Immigration Services directly, and then the Department of State directly at the consular level. And you're going to have to actually recruit uh, to see if you can hire somebody domestically as a nanny before you're even allowed to go and you know offer this magical nanny that you might have abroad a job. And if you don't have a nanny in mind, then you also have to work with recruiters to go find that person. And there's gonna be limitations on that depending on where you live. Looking at you, California. Oh my God, California makes it hard. But anyhow, uh, this is a really complex process, which takes me to the next point. This process at certain times of the year has lotteries at certain times it doesn't. There's two times of the year that we apply, January 1st and July 1st. January 1st, there's a lottery, and that's for nannies who can start on April 1st or later. July 1st, there's no lottery, but this year it went fast, and so I'd say you got about two weeks to get everything in, and uh, that's for nannies who can start in October. So what I always propose to families is just like, be ready to do a three cycle strategy. Okay, the first time you apply for a nanny, there's always kinks to work out in that application, there tend to be. And so even if you apply July 1st of one year, uh, maybe you'll miss the cutoff. You know, maybe you'll miss the cutoff because there's gonna be a lot of back and forth Department of Labor. Then you have to apply again in the April cycle, which again is a lottery cycle. This time you don't have a lot of back and forth because you're probably certified from the first cycle. And then if you miss the lottery, you just apply again for that next July 1st year, at which point you definitely get it. I lay all this out again in the ebook and I'm going to lay this out in the video. It's called the three cycle strategy and it's just something to keep in mind. So generally speaking, if you want to be super safe, you give yourself a year, you know, to get through this program. Otherwise, you know, you got to think in multiple cycles, especially when we talk about applying in the April cycle, we actually want to be thinking, hey, even though I'm applying January 1st, I'm really applying for a nanny that's probably coming in October because the lottery is so loaded for the H2B program. Again, some of that doesn't make sense either. Go check out other videos on the H2B that I have on my channel that talk about the lottery or look for other videos in the series or wait for them if you're watching this as it comes out that talks about the H2B lottery process. And finally, ebook. OK, the ebook is going to have a lot of this information. So now, you know, you you find that you can qualify for the program. You figure out how to actually put together the packages you need to uh, apply. You, you go through all three agencies, Department of Labor, USCIS, the consular program, 
Well now, and let's say the nanny's coming, now you have to be ready to be an employer. So that means having contracts in place, that means having uh, lodging in place or lodging found for the nanny, that means having your payroll in place. There's so many things that you're going to need and so this program is really not for people who want to be passive. It's not like an au pair program where the au pair sponsor takes care of everything. You are going to be responsible for every bit of that employer-employee relationship and that comes with its own hurdles. And so even though this is an opportunity for you, you have to be aware this is going to be quite unlike anything um, you've probably done if you've never employed people. Uh, particularly since this person more likely than not is going to be living with you in your house. I'm going to cover what that means also in a future video. So what I have touched on here is what you have to kind of think about in this program, what it actually is. It's the H2B visa program. Uh, what some of the questions are that you have to think about. Um, I encourage you to check out the nanny ebook and I encourage you to stick with me as I cover each one of these things in these videos that are coming up. All right, so stick around, go to the next video, leave your questions in the comments, okay? Subscribe so you know when the next video comes out. And if you have questions and if you know you wanna do this program, do contact me at Frontera Tech Law. That's FrontiraTech.com. We're the best rated firm right now uh, in New Haven. And I can guarantee you that there's few other people in the country, if any, that know how to do this. Thanks so much.